I received this word in a dream prophetically that I need to share with you urgently. So I ask you please to watch this entire video to the very end. Stay tuned. I got a powerful prophetic word in my dream. In this dream, I was ministering to people and the subject was on hypocrisy. This is not something that has crossed my mind, but this is something that was planted in my heart by the Father concerning the times and concerning what is grieving his heart as it pertains to the condition of the church even now. And I believe that this is a time and a day that the Lord has sent me here to address hypocrisy because this subject is not being addressed in churches anymore. We don't see videos online that are dealing and unmasking this subject. And I am praying by the grace of God that you will endure through this video to the very end, because I believe God wants to reveal himself to you. But before he can reveal himself to you, he must first uncover that which has lied dormant in your heart. And I believe that you clicking on this video is not by coincidence. It is not by chance. But I believe that the Father has drawn you here to hear this message today. So before we begin, I am going to begin by sharing a scripture. Before I share the dream and the revelation that I have received as it pertains to this subject of hypocrisy. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn your Bibles to the book of Matthew. We're going to read from verses 25 to 28. And the Bible says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you cleanse the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of extortion and self-indulgence. Blind Pharisee, first cleanse the inside of the cup and dish, that the outside of them may be clean also. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs, which indeed appear beautiful outwardly, but inside are full of dead men's bones and all uncleanness. Even so you also outwardly appear righteous to man, but inside you are full of hypocrisy and lawlessness. Then I want us to look at Matthew chapter 15, and we're going to read from verses 7. And the Bible says, Hypocrites, well did Isaiah prophesy about you, saying, These people draw nigh to me with their mouth, and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. When he had called the multitude to himself, he said to them, Hear and understand. Not what goes into the mouth that defiles a man, but what comes out of the mouth that defiles a man. Hallelujah. And Holy Spirit, we welcome you to come and reign. Come and reign, Holy Spirit. Lord, speak through me as your vessel in the mighty name of Jesus. May we all be transformed by the power and the light of your gospel. In Jesus' mighty holy name. Amen. I had a dream prophetically, and in this dream, I was ministering to people, and the subject was on hypocrisy. And as I was preaching this word, this word was full of power. There was conviction, and I began to address the hypocrites in the church, not knowing that such a time as this would avail where God would have me to minister to people about the subject of hypocrisy. And I began to call forth the hypocrites and they began to come forward and repent. Glory to God. Many people that did not even know that they were living a life of hypocrisy were convicted and they came to the altar to repent. Hallelujah. And I believe that this is a subject that is breaking the heart of God. There are many people as the word of God revealed to us that wash the outside of the plate and the cup. They don't have a problem maintaining the appearance of the exterior. Glory to God. You know, we go into the shower and we are able to wash our bodies and we're able to look good outwardly. Glory to God. You know, we are trying to project an image publicly that is contrary to 
the reality privately. Glory to God. And so Jesus began to address this hypocrite's glory that carried a form of godliness, but they denied the power thereof. Glory to God. They carried a form of it, but it wasn't authentic. Hallelujah. They are trying to duplicate something, hallelujah, which they cannot do because they're not willing to let go of those things that God hates. Glory to God. I'm reminded of Jesus while he was in the tomb for three days and suddenly he is resurrected in glory and the stone, my God, hallelujah, is rolled away. There are things in this season that the Lord is revealing that he is causing to be exposed by means of this stone of hypocrisy being rolled away. There are people that are going to come into the light and the agenda and the motives of their hearts are going to be brought to light. For we're in a season where God is about to say, let there be light. And when God says, let there be light, there was light, there is light. And so Jesus begins to speak emphatically that it is not what goes into your mouth. You can eat food, but it's going to come out. Hallelujah. But it is what comes out of your mouth that defiles you. And the Lord is addressing the hypocrisy in the house of God. Hypocrisy has risen up. Hypocrisy has elevated in our generation. That there are people that are so comfortable and even content living a double life. You're living a life that is contrary to what you preach, to what you proclaim. You know, there are people that are saying they love Jesus. Hallelujah. But their conduct, their appearance, their ways of living, their habits, their lifestyles are completely contrary to their confession. Hallelujah. They are like whitewashed tombs that Jesus began to rebuke and he called them, you brood of vipers. Woe to you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I believe this is a woe message from the Father to the church because there are many people that are beguiled. We are living at a time of the great deception. We are living at the time of great lawlessness where lawlessness is abounding in the earth in accordance to Matthew chapter 24. A lot of people in our generation cannot discern the times. We are not even ready for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. If he is to come right now, many people would be plunged into eternal damnation. They would be plunged into eternal perdition, into Gehenna for living a life of hypocrisy. You're telling people one thing, but you cannot hide or conceal your heart from God. He sees the hypocrisy in our hearts. He sees the deceit in our hearts. Hallelujah. He sees the unlawfulness in our hearts. He sees the hidden agendas in our hearts. He sees the perversion in our hearts. He sees the iniquities in our hearts. My God, everything is exposed and brought to light. My God, in the eyes of God, the eyes of God are like a surveillance and he is watching 24 seven. There is nothing that misses God. Hallelujah. There's nothing that you're going to do in the next minute that God has not yet known or seen. There's nothing you're going to do tomorrow or in five years or next week that God has not fully known. We're talking about God fully knowing a thing before you ever arrive to the preview of that very thing. And God in this season has sent me as an ambassador of the kingdom to address the state of the church, which is hypocrisy. Hypocrisy amongst the leaders. There is hypocrisy amongst the flock. Hallelujah. There is hypocrisy in the government. There is hypocrisy everywhere. And God is tired of the hypocrisy. We are living in hypocrisy. We are living like lukewarm believers. Glory to God. And the agenda of the enemy has got to be thwarted in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Jesus speaks about we wash the outside of the plate. We wash the outside of the cups. Hallelujah. But inside we are full of defilement. We are defiled on the inside. Glory. Many of us cannot even stand in the presence of God because we are unworthy. And we are unworthy because of what we are housing on the inside of us. Glory to God. Many of us have been carriers of stubborn sins in our lives that those sinful lifestyles have become our normal. 
We have adapted to a normal that is demonic. Hallelujah. We have adapted to a correspondence of the kingdom of darkness. And we don't even know how far gone we are, how far out of contact we are from the presence of God. David began to pray. And he said, Lord, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. David began to pray, take not thy Holy Spirit from me. But restore unto me the joy of my salvation and renew a right spirit within me. David was praying unto God in tears, saying, Lord, take me not away from your presence. There are many of us in this season, glory to God, who are inadvertently shifting away from the presence of God. The other day, I was, as, as I was washing the dishes, I began to pray to the Father. And I said, God, I don't know what it feels like to be outside of your presence. I don't want to experience being outside of your presence. We are living at a time where people are becoming more and more comfortable drifting away from the presence of God and living independent of God. To live a life independent of God is death. The Bible says there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end is death. It always seems right in the moment just to find ourselves in destruction, just to find ourselves in the abyss. And there are many people that are being utterly de deluded by the Antichrist, this Antichrist movement that is operating in the earth realm to silence the mouth of the truth. I had another dream, praise God. Uh, the Lord has brought this to my remembrance. I had another dream where I was in a church and I was ministering to people there about three of us that got called up and as I think I was the last one to start speaking and I began to rebuke the church and I said you only go to God when you have a need you know you only care about God when you have problems when you need your rent paid you know when you have needs that you need God to meet in your life but you don't really care about God hallelujah and I began to rebuke them and I began to tell them that all you're concerned about is the weather you're not concerned about the things of the kingdom. And as I began to speak these things, as I began to rebuke these people, suddenly in the dream, my, my lips were sealed. It's like there was a strong demonic influence that was trying to silence my mouth from reaching. And as I began to speak, these people would not listen. They were on their phones, hallelujah, texting. They were doing all kinds of things, trying to avoid this message. You know, it is very possible to hear and not listen. You know, hearing is a result of having ears, glory, but then there's a, another dimension that has to do with you listening, glory. You know, it is one thing to talk to your spouse, but it's another thing for them to listen. Hallelujah, you can waste your time speaking and speaking, and even God heard the prayers of Samuel, but it doesn't mean that he listened, hallelujah, because God said to Samuel, that how long will you mourn after Saul, seeing that I have rejected him as king of Israel? Hallelujah. Stop wasting your time interceding for a man that I've already rejected. He is not welcome in my kingdom. God in this season is addressing the hypocrites. You know who you are. I myself have lived a life of hypocrisy that I had to repent of. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Many of us are living a life of hypocrisy and we are comfortable being hypocrites. Not knowing that we are being excluded from the Lamb's book of life. Excluded from the kingdom of God. But because we are so content living a double life, we're not willing to be uncovered, to be brought into the light. But the Bible says nothing is hidden that shall not be brought to the light glory everything that is hidden is now being uncovered we are at a time prophetically where things are being exposed god is causing things that have been hidden under the surface in the realm of darkness to be brought out into the light the hatred that people had in their hearts is being exposed the prejudice you know the racism that people had in their hearts is being exposed the feelings they had towards other people is being exposed and people don't even realize what is happening god is allowing these things to happen because many people have been content with residue with garbage in their hearts and now god is bringing all these things to light things are beginning to surface that had piled up over the years and they are being brought to the light and they have been brought to our attention but do you really see what god is doing before God can bring healing, there has got to be exposure. Before God can bring deliverance, 
there has got to be exposure and the exposure is taking place because God wants to see how deep we are operating in lawlessness and in error. Many of us are operating in error. Many people in the church right now, and I'm talking about leaders, prophets, apostles, evangelists. I'm talking about the flock. Many people in the house of God are bound by the chains of pornography. I'm talking about pornography. I mean, pornography has skyrocketed in 2020. I began the year by saying that perversion has elevated like never before. Many people in the house of God are becoming victims of pornography. I'm telling you. Because Jezebel has found a door, a door wide open to come in and to influence. And the church has decided to tolerate Jezebel. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 2 verses 20, Sufferest that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess. She has seduced my servants into immorality. I have given her time to repent, but she has not repented. Therefore, I will throw her and her children into a sickbed. We're living at a time of hypocrisy and great perversion. I'm telling you, leaders, people are watching pornography daily. Jesus said such can only come out, but by prayer and fasting. Nobody is fasting for these things to break off of their lives. Glory to God. Hallelujah. My God, people are glued to people, attached by means of soul ties, unable to break free. My God. Hallelujah. Hypocrisy is on the rise. Hypocrisy is on the rise. And God is going to judge the church. The Bible says judgment must begin in the house of the Lord. And if it begins with us, what will happen to the world? Judgment is going to begin in God's house. And we have been hypocrites for too long. And God is calling us to repentance. We have been comfortable being hypocrites for too long. And Jehovah, Mando Kosatakadabahaya, Repo Kosokotabaya, Matala Kabalaka Bahande. He is calling us into repentance. I don't know who you are. Mata Katara Kabahaya. But you know that the life that you're living privately is not the life that is being displayed publicly. You know, my God, that you have managed to deceive the people around you for so long. My God, and you know deep inside that you're dying inside because you're housing secrets in your heart that nobody else knows about. You are comfortable being a hypocrite and you're at a place in your life where you're saying enough is enough. God, I don't want to live my life like this anymore. If I continue to live like this, my end will be the lake of fire. This is an urgent call to repentance. This is the heart of the Father. Glory to God. He is calling hypocrites to repentance. I realized my hypocrisy and I had to go before God and repent. And I'm not afraid to be transparent. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know who you are right now. You're living a life of hypocrisy. There are things in your heart you haven't dealt with. There are sins in your life, my God, that you've become so comfortable lying in. Glory to God. You're living a life of a hypocrite. There are people on social media that are so comfortable posting scriptures. But then you post pictures of yourself naked and exposed and you don't even care anymore. Glory to God. Because now you're working for Jezebel. And Jezebel doesn't even mind saying Jesus out of her mouth. Glory to God. And some of you are posting scriptures and you want to appear like you're holy and righteous. You brood of vipers. You makatoro kosokotabahaya. Woe unto you. Uncircumcised Philistines that defy the armies of the living God. That defy the statutes of God. Woe to you, wicked generation. God is displeased with us. He is displeased with us. And God in this season, he is elevating a standard. It is either God or the devil. Choose what house you're going to serve. Choose what kingdom you're going to serve. As for me and my house, I will serve the Lord. Hypocrisy is what God is dealing with. Before God can hit the reset, God is going to expose some things. I'm going to say that again. Before God can hit the reset, God is going to expose some things. Glory to God. 
before this reset comes that is coming because I see a reset that's about to come. Before this reset comes, God is going to cause things to come to the light. If you're watching right now, you're living a life of a hypocrite. You know who you are. You're living a life of a hippo. And hippos are some ugly animals. If you've ever watched a hippo on television, you know those hippos are ugly and they're hippos for a reason. Because anytime we settle for hypocrisy, we become hippos. You, you, you ever wondered why hippos have such big mouth? They open up their mouth and then they're able to just eat anything. Because their mouth represents hypocrisy. So what is eating you that you haven't dealt with because you're comfortable being a hypocrite? Hypocrites will not make it to the kingdom of God. They will not make it in. So we have a moment, we have an opportunity that the Father has awarded to us to repent, each and every one of us. I am not excluding myself. I keep saying us, all of us. The Bible says we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All of us, we have got to repent and do away with hypocrisy. This is Apostle Weiss Preach, and I give God all the glory. Please watch this video right here, or watch this video right here. If you would love to sow into this ministry, do so, and God will bless you.